Do you need to add Wi-Fi to your PC? Whether you're tired of dealing with Ethernet cables or simply want the freedom to connect wirelessly, we've got you covered. I'll guide you step-by-step -step through choosing the right Wi-Fi adapter, installing it into your computer, and getting connected in no time at all. So let's dive in and get your PC Wi-Fi ready. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. Before we begin, it's important to check to see if your PC already has built-in Wi-Fi. Many modern desktops come with this, but older models or budget builds like I have here may not. To verify, you can check the specifications of your motherboard or look for a Wi-Fi icon in your system tray. This is in the bottom right-hand corner of your desktop. Click the small globe, or if your system is plugged in via Ethernet, it'll look like this Ethernet plug. If you click either of these and don't see an option for nearby Wi-Fi networks, you probably need to watch the rest of this video. If you're still unsure, you can open the device manager on your PC and look for network adapters. If you see a Wi-Fi adapter listed, your PC has built-in Wi-Fi. If not, you'll need to add a Wi-Fi adapter, which we'll cover in the following steps. There are two main types of adapters to consider. Internal PCI Wi-Fi cards, like this TP-Link AC1200 I've got here and external USB Wi-Fi adapters, such as the ASUS USB AC53 Nano. Internal PCIe cards are installed inside your computer and generally offer better performance and a more stable connection. They are a must for users who want high-speed internet for gaming or streaming. External USB Wi-Fi adapters, on the other hand, are easy to install and portable, making them the convenient choice. When choosing an adapter, make sure it's compatible with your operating system and supports the latest Wi-Fi standards. This ensures you're getting the best possible performance. If you're thinking about using an internal PCI Wi-Fi card, you'll need to open up your computer to get a good look at your motherboard. If you aren't comfortable with this, you may want to stop here and check the description for links to external USB Wi-Fi adapters. But remember, internal PCI Wi-Fi cards generally offer better performance and increased range. Now you will need to determine if you've got an open PCI slot to be able to accept this card. You can see my motherboard has two small PCIe slots and one large slot. These can all be used for this Wi-Fi adapter. You can pick up compatible adapters from any reputable online retailer, such as Best Buy or Amazon. If you want, I've left Amazon links down below to both USB and PCIe Wi-Fi devices. After purchasing your Wi-Fi adapter, you'll need to install it onto your PC. If you purchase an internal PCI Wi-Fi card, this portion of the video is just what you need. Start by powering off your PC and unplugging it from the wall. Open your computer case and locate an available PCI slot on your motherboard. For my PC, it's as easy as swinging open the glass door and lifting it away. One of the PCI expansion plates needs to be removed to allow room for my adapter. To remove your PCI slot, you may need a number two screwdriver. In the case of my PC here, some of them are bendable tabs that will snap off and then you can install your PCI card. Some of them have a flip tab and then you just slide the PCI slot out. You'll have to determine which one is your use case and then adjust accordingly. One of the really cool things about this adapter is it has both brackets depending on your size of your computer. It has a full-size PCI slot bracket, which is already pre-installed, or it comes with a mini bracket as well if you have a half-size PCI slot. Carefully insert the Wi-Fi card into the slot, making sure it's securely in place. Then screw it in with the same screw that held in the expansion cover to hold it steady. If you've chosen an external USB Wi-Fi adapter, installation is even easier. Just find any open USB port and plug your adapter in. My USB adapter is a type A port, and I generally like to plug it in as high on the case as possible to allow for the strongest connection and best performance. In both cases, ensure your antennas, if included, are properly installed to improve your signal. The card I chose doesn't need any external power, so all that's left is installing the two included antennas and closing the side panel back up. With your Wi-Fi adapter physically installed, the next step is to download and install the necessary drivers and software. Both of my Wi-Fi adapters worked right away without downloading anything. This may be because I have Windows 11 installed on this PC. If you've got something like Windows 10 or older, it may not work right out of the box. Some adapters come with a CD containing the drivers you'll need. 
but it's often better to download the latest version from the manufacturer's website to ensure that your drivers are up to date. Once downloaded, run the software and follow the on-screen instructions to complete installation. After installation is complete, restart your PC to ensure the drivers and software are fully integrated with your system. This isn't a super complicated step, but a lot of people will buy their product, plug it in, expecting it to just work right out of the box, and it doesn't always happen that way, so they'll think it's defective. You must get the drivers and software to allow your computer to detect your PCI card or USB adapter appropriately. Now that your Wi-Fi adapter is installed and your drivers are up to date, it's time to connect to your network. Open your PC's network settings by clicking on the Wi-Fi icon in the system tray, or you can access this from your network and internet settings menu. You should see a list of available Wi-Fi networks. Select your network from the list and click connect. You'll be prompted to enter your network password, if you have one. Type it in carefully and again click next. Once connected, your PC should automatically remember this network for future use. There's a checkbox that you'll want to select to make sure this happens. To ensure a stable connection, you might want to test your internet speed and signal strength. To do this, you can swing over to Google and typing in speed test. Speed test by Okola. Okola? Okola? I don't know. This is the one that I like to use. But there's other options like Google and Fast.com. Now, speed tests are kind of inaccurate since your speed not only depends on your hardware, but the signal from the server as well. Remember, it's just a rough estimate. Since I've got both types of Wi-Fi adapter and they're the same AC1200 dual band speed, I figured I'd run some speed test racing to see who was faster. The TP-Link PCIe Archer T4E that I've got, I picked it up for $20 over on Amazon, ran at 281.38 megabits per second download and 232.15 upload. The ASUS USB AC53 Nano, which costs $40 retail, however, I got it for free from a friend of mine, came in at 202.78 megabits per second download and 125.86 upload. Now, speed tests are not the best representation of an adapter's overall performance. So I did do three runs of each and took the average of that. You can't argue with the consistency, range, and performance of the internal adapter. Adding Wi-Fi to your PC can greatly enhance your flexibility and convenience, freeing you from the limitation of Ethernet cables and allowing you to connect to the internet from anywhere within your router's range. By following these simple steps, you'll be able to enjoy a seamless and reliable wireless experience. Whether you're upgrading for better mobility, reducing cable clutter, or preparing for the latest internet speeds, this video should have you covered. And if it did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more tech tutorials and tips. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one.